Our area's most beautiful properties deserve the finest realtors. Meeks Realty Group. We focus on buying and selling residential and commercial properties throughout the tri-state area. Contact Meeks Realty Group online at meeks.us or call 304-440-1101. The views and opinions expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of 580 WCHS, its employees, or WVRC Media. From the studios of WVRC Media, the country, the United States of America, the state, West Virginia, the city, Charleston, this is the Dave Allen Show. And your host. What? we've got here is failure to communicate. He's kind of a big deal. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Dave Allen. And a good Thursday morning to you from the Parmar Store Studio. It's the Dave Allen Show brought to you by the Thornhill Auto Group, the voice of Charleston WCHS. Ryan Nicholson is our producer today. Bigly Piggly Wiggly Hotline 304-345-5858 and the text line courtesy of Ruth Pharmacy 304-935-5008 brought to you we are by the Thornhill Auto Group including Thornhill Toyota come check out the new Camry Corolla RAV4 and more and they're not just selling cars they're creating unforgettable adventures at Thornhill. Click or come by Thornhill Toyota, WV.com, or on the Thornhill Motor Mile, US 119 in Chapmanville. We do the show from the Parmar Store Studio. If there's not a Parmar Store near you now, there will be soon. Parmar, the official store of high school sports in West Virginia and the official convenience store of Marshall University. Coming up a little bit later on the show, Charleston City Councilman Emmett Pepper is going to join us. Uh, Charleston has one of the largest, and we've talked about this on the show uh, in the past, one of the largest city councils in America. I mean, we're talking numbers, and there are major metropolitan cities that don't have as many city council people as Charleston has. And there's been some that have said, we got too many. We need to diminish it a little bit, knock it down a few notches. We don't need nearly 30 city council people in Charleston. Uh, so we're going to get Emmett Pepper's take on that, plus some other things going on in the city as well. Kim Mason from the West Virginia Secretary of State's office is going to uh, join us. They have got an effort going to try to combat human trafficking. And you think that uh, is something that doesn't happen in West Virginia? Well, it certainly is something that happens in West Virginia. So the Secretary of State's office has got a new program out working with businesses. To talk about that. Kim Mason from the office is going to join us. Plus, there was recently, just a couple days ago, a, uh, a voter fraud conviction here in West Virginia. And Kim's going to talk about that coming up. And your calls and texts are welcome, as always. Bigly Piggly Wiggly Hotline, 304-345-5858. And the text line for fruit, 304-935-5008. 17th annual trick or beat powered by todd judy motors is tonight two sessions at gomar ballpark and they are completely sold out sorry folks that's why we tell you to get those tickets ahead of time we hope you did because you can't be admitted the kids can't be without a ticket and they are gone in the words of the famed chicago white Sox announcer the hawk ken harrelson they gone uh g money for 107.3 the beat joins us right now via the bigly piggly wiggly hotline to talk about it g good morning how are you sir Hey, good morning, Dave. How you doing? Doing fine, man. Uh, it's uh, T minus well, less than twelve hours, and so we're going to have about three or four thousand kids over at Gomart Ballpark tonight's the big night. Yes, it is, Dave. And you know, I am so excited. Actually, I get excited for all of our events, but you know, this is one of our biggest events that we put on for the city. And and I woke up this morning and I was like, okay, I am ready to go. I'm trying to find out what costume I'm going to put on tonight. Because, you know, I like to dress up for the kids while I'm handing out candy. Because, again, this is one of our biggest events that we put on for the city. Yeah, indeed. Uh, And it's the 17th annual event. Uh, How many have you been involved with? Dave, I've been since day one. Day one, man. I had a feeling. I just wanted to make sure. (laughs) Yes, 17 years ago, you know, we had one of our co-workers – she uh, she had had a baby a year before, and her child was a year old, and she was like, you know, she went to Woody, and she went to our, our uh, vice president at the time, and she was like, listen, you know, I do the night show. I want to take my child to trick-or-treating, but I can't because I'm on the radio. Mm-hmm. So she came up with this idea. She was like, well, why don't we just get together and provide a safe environment for the kids to trick-or-treat? So for that first year, we, we just actually, we went around and we went to all kind of businesses, you know, asking them, hey, do you want to donate candy? We went to all of the pizza places and it's like, 
hey, can you donate pizzas? You know, this is what we're doing. So this is how Trick or Beat started 17 years ago. You know, we got out there and we did the leg work. And as you can see now from that, from then until now, we have grown tremendously. I mean, we have a lot of uh, businesses that's jumped on board. And, of course, Todd Judy, um, he's one of our biggest, you know, we go to him and say, hey, we're doing this for the kids. Mm-hmm. Todd Judy is jumping yep. on board. So, you know, this this thing has grown over the last 17 years, and, you know, hopefully it, it will continue to grow. And, of course, the other sponsors, as you said, Todd Judy is the, the uh, main, no pun intended, the main driver behind this whole thing. But the Charleston Dirty Birds, Salango Law, A to Z Outlet, New Beginning Learning Academy, IHOP, the Charleston Police Department, the City of Charleston, uh, Goodwill, West Virginia Eye Consultants, Family Care Health Centers, Doug Scaff, West Virginia Health Right, Norfolk Southern, 10 in 10 Inc., Polka Valley Bank, Charleston Child Care and Learning Center, Kidaroos, ACES Coalition of Charleston, all making this thing possible to Two sessions uh, tonight. Now, one is at 6 and the other is at 7.30. As we said, well over 3,000 kids are, are uh, expected to be there. Other than just the uh, the smiles and the fun that the kids get to have, what's the highlight for G-Money in this whole thing? The highlight for me, again, is, is seeing the kids coming dressed in their costumes, mm-hmm. seeing them with that big smile on their face when we give them candy because we just don't give them one piece. We give them handfuls of candy. And, just, you know, to see them walk around the concourse at, at, uh, at the ballpark and just get candy, I mean, it, it's so it's, – it's enjoyable. And then at the end, they get to have pizza. So after they walk around the whole concourse, they, at the, the last stop is the pizza stop. They get yeah. a pizza, drink, and then they can go home and enjoy their evening. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the weather, G, again, we're talking G Money from the beat about tonight's trick or beat. Uh, the weather's going to be uh, fantastic uh, tonight. You couldn't ask for better weather because you never know when you're dealing with October because I think for the actual trick or treat night, temperature's going to be rainy and in the 40s, I think, or something like that. So it's going to be, uh, as a start time, it's going to be about 70, 75 degrees. Couldn't ask for, for better weather. And for the ones, hopefully they got their tickets uh, because it's completely uh, sold out. Uh, yeah, but, but no tickets. No, there, no there, Zero. <laughs> there are zero. But it's just another example, and we don't want to pat ourselves on the back too much, G, because we do it for the community. But it's just another example of what this company, a West Virginia-based company, WVRC Media, does in giving back to the communities. And you're right about that, Dave, and that's one thing that I want to speak on. You know, I I mean, me, Woody, DJ Ackwright, we just appreciate, you know, when we throw, when, when our events go on, we bring out the whole building. Yep. <laughs> the whole West Virginia Radio Corporation media, the whole building comes out. So we get a lot of support from all of our coworkers right there in the building, along with all of our sponsors. And I got to say, you know, the ballpark, they've been with us since day one, mm-hmm. 17 years. Big shout out to Andy Shea over there. I'm telling you, they do a great job in, you know, providing everything that we need to sit up and everything. So, Big shout out to them. Big shout out to Andy. He 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 works with us. And like he is he's great. And all of our stations, as you said, uh, are going to be represented. The folks from Metro News will be there, the WCHS Network, V100, uh, our, our, our new country station, KZ, Charleston's ESPN Radio, Superstar Country, KWS, 987 The Mountain, the office staff, the sales team, uh, management, engineering. We're all there tonight. As Woody would say, we outside. Woody's, we working, outside, Woody's working with me on things like that to say <laughs> it doesn't sound as cool as when he says, but, but we outside. So hats off again to to Woody and Act Right and everyone for making this possible. And also, I want to give a big shout out to our promotions department here, headed up by Ashley Prowse and Matt Guitar Murphy, because them and, and Lowen and Leah and the, and the folks out front, they do a fantastic job of putting this because it's it's one thing to show up tonight. And as, as you know, you've been involved in the concert business for some time. I always say the show is the easy part. Yeah, <laughs> it's the yes. weeks leading up to it, and the sponsors, and, and and they were running around like crazy yesterday, running to this place and that place, and picking up candy and so on and so forth. So, hats off to all of the staff here. This is not something that anybody in our company gets paid any extra to do. We just do it for the love of the community, G. Exactly, that's what we do. And like you say, it wouldn't be possible. You know, me myself, DJ Ackwright, Woody, we can't take all the credit because. You know, like you say, Matt, he's out there running around. Ashley, Leah, Lauren. I mean, they're, everybody is out here running around to make sure that this thing happens. And it's going to happen.
Yep, indeed it is. And again, it is completely sold out. We'll see you there tonight, uh, G. I appreciate you taking time to to. Uh, you're probably happy to be able to sit down and make a quick phone call because I know you got to get right back and get get into prep mode for the night. We'll see you at the ballpark tonight, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dave. Uh, G. Money again from the Beat 17th Annual Trick or Beat happening tonight at GoMart Ballpark. It is uh, powered by Todd Judy Motors. And again, uh, for the final time, I'll say uh, the Dirty Birds, City of Charleston, Salango Law, A to Z Outlet, New Beginning Learning Academy, IHOP, the Charleston Police Department, uh, Goodwill, West Virginia Eye Consultants, Family Care, uh, Family Care Health Centers, Doug Scaff, West Virginia Health Right, Norfolk Southern, 10 and 10, Inc., Polka Valley Bank, Charleston Child Care Learning Center, Kitteroos, Aces Coalition of Charleston, and our sister station, 1073 The Beat, and all of our stations making it all possible tonight. And, and I don't, folks, i got to bring this up, um, and then we'll go to break, and we'll bring in uh, Charleston City Councilman Emma Pepper. Um, I don't want to bring any negativity into this, but I do need to say this. This is a free event for the kids. And up until yesterday, we had tickets available at several locations, and we told you all about it. We had them here at 1111, but we also had them at Todd Judy and several other locations as well. The tickets are all gone. And we're, we apologize for that, but we're talking well over three to 4,000 kids that are going to be there tonight. It's a free event, and the reason that we put the tickets out there is just so we have a head count so we can go to our sponsor and go, hey, this is how much, this is how much candy that we need for this event. So for the, unfortunately, I got to throw this out there, for the second or third year, we've had reports of people taking, uh, taking the free tickets that we give out courtesy of our sponsors, and trying to sell them online. So if you see that posted somewhere, give us a call here, and we will make sure that that person or peoples never attend another trick or beat or any promotions that we sponsor again. Not trying to be that negative, but it's that simple. It just kind of pees you off a little bit, you know, when you – sponsors donate their time and and they donate their money whatever and the tickets are free but yet we have people and we again second or third year we've had reports of people trying to sell the tickets online for a free event for the kids so just uh not cool not cool at all dave allen show is uh, brought to you in part by qc kinetics of huntington and cross lanes now imagine if you will living your life this fall with no more pain in your knees, your hips, your shoulders, or your back. QC Kinetics will make it happen without steroid surgery, pain pills, or downtime. Contact QC of Huntington and Cross Lanes for a complimentary consultation, 304-202-5566, 304-202-5566 for QC Kinetics of Huntington and Cross Lanes. It's 920. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Charleston City Councilman Emmett Peppers here from the Parmar Store Studio. It is the Dave Allen Show. It's brought to you by the Thornhill Auto Group on The Voice of Charleston, WCHS. Brought to you by the Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses. Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses bring first-class businesses to your community. Are you ready to make every adventure awesome? Look no further than the new Thornhill Toyota. Introducing the 2023 Toyota Camry, Corolla, and RAV4. The ultimate companions for your journey. Whether it's the sleek Camry or the adventurous RAV4, we've got the perfect ride for you. And don't forget our unbeatable selection. We've got a ride for every style and budget. At the new Thornhill Toyota, we're not just selling cars. We're creating unforgettable adventures. So why wait? Visit us today and let Let's make every adventure awesome together. Click or come by at ThornhillToyotaWV.com. We're on the Thornhill Motor Mile, US 119 Chapmanville. See Thornhill for full details. Elevators. You take them for granted until they let you down. If you're working to maintain a stellar reputation, then let me introduce you to DC Elevator. We want to work with you to make sure your people get where they are going. What could be better than a new company coming to the area and already having 45 years of experience? DC Elevator is bringing a new culture of elevator maintenance, repairs, modernization, and installation to West Virginia. Don't leave your people hanging. For a free consultation, call DC Elevator at 304-345-7222. Are you worried about retirement? Stike Wealth Enhancement Group is the premier retirement planning service in West Virginia. With years of experience and a commitment to personalized service, they'll work with you to create a customized retirement plan that addresses your unique needs and goals. Whether you're just starting to plan or nearing retirement age, Stike Wealth Enhancement Group makes the process easy and stress-free. Visit stikeweg.com. For more information, securities and advisory service offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member Finn Recipic.
922, our phone calls to the Dave Allen Show, service of Bigly Piggly Wiggly. When shopping at your Bigly Piggly Wiggly, be sure to join their loyalty program. We can save big at the gas pumps and throughout the store with their electronic coupons and free gifts on Fridays just for stopping by from farm to table. Bigly Piggly Wiggly, the best kept secret in Charleston texting services provided by Fruit Pharmacy, your hometown family pharmacy. Uh, Tex says, I find it odd that 107.3 and its hosts are family and community oriented, but a good part of the music they play except on Sunday mornings is a positive family values or positive in building community just an observation from a listener all right well good noted noted woody g noted Dex says dave allen getting upset over people selling their tickets to make money dave i thought you were an unabashed capitalist what gives well when it's for charity okay yeah, good point i always say i'm the world's ultimate what are you laughing at over there as council person emmett peppers over here laughing at me you know it's it's for charity okay it's you know, yeah. there, there, there's a line. Um, Tech says uh, there's a dead deer on Old Route 60 near the entrance of Charleston. It's been there for almost four weeks, and scavengers have got him down to a skeleton. Come on, Mayor. It's well traveled. Emmett Pepper, who's the director of deer carcass removal uh, for the city of Charleston, uh, Councilman, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for Always being fun. here. Can you make a note of that and get that? Uh, actually, Is the, that folks in the city at the, of Charleston. Uh, it's what they said. Yeah, it's oh, okay. uh, it's uh, on uh, 60 toward the entrance of Charleston. Uh, is what they said. And I know that uh, that Tina and the folks at the mayor's office listen every day. So uh, yeah. Um, so state road though, okay. I don't know. <laughs> that is, it's, it's a kind of a state road issue, but maybe, maybe they can make a phone call. Uh, one of the things I want to ask you about this morning, I got several things I want to talk to uh, Councilman Emmett Pepper about. But first of all, let me just say, I was walking a couple of weeks well, last week, I think it was two weeks ago, it was last week. I was walking down the street and I was, um, uh, over in the Elk City District, I had just come meeting from somebody from lunch and I'm walking down and I saw you, yeah. having lunch at now. Where were you having lunch at the uh. I, for, I always forget the name of the. I, it's my first time I've I'd been there. Okay, you were um, sitting in the window eating their, yeah, their yeah, ice cream I, place over yeah, there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. All they right. Have good burgers. Okay. Uh, well, I was going to say, you know, you could have at least offered to buy me a burger. I mean, <laughs> ethical standards aside, damn it, I I can be bought for the price of a cheeseburger. No, I'd oh, already man. had lunch. I'm just messing. With you. I already had Fighting lunch. Uh, but uh, let's talk about the size of city council, uh, councilman. Uh, it is it is quite large. It's one of the largest city councils in america this is not something new i'm presuming this has been that way since the beginning of the city of charleston or at least at some point uh, only a couple of major cities have a council the size that charleston has and you can go to you know I, and i'm just kind of just throwing out city names here i'm you know vegas dallas you know pittsburgh whatever they don't have the size of the city council that charleston has now you're a proponent i understand of keeping council the size that it is now. And how many city council people do we have? We have 26. There's 20 ward uh, council members and six at large. Okay. I'm one of the six at large. Okay. And you're a proponent. I think it's fair to say of keeping it the, the, the size that it is now. Why is that? I, I like, I think it's good that we have a lot of people involved in, in the government. I think it's good that we have um, a, a large city council. There's no question. We, we have one of the largest in the countries, uh, you know, depending on how you uh, count it, I think we're either the seventh or the 14th largest. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, uh, so, so yeah, th- there's no question that we are we are large. The question I have is, it, two, what is that bad? And if if we think it's bad, why do we think what what is the problem we think is created by that? And I I haven't really gotten great answers on that. Uh, the people I've heard from who are the kind of most adamant, like why this is ridiculous. It's a large council. The people I hear from on that um, are the ones who I think are used to having easy access to power, and. And frankly, um, are, are annoyed. <laughs> they have to talk to so many of us, um, and and so I think uh, you know the people who live in the wards and who know their ward uh, um, member and who uh, have a c- close connection with folks on city council. I- I've heard of, oh, from a lot of people that they really like having that. They don't, you know. I I was at uh, an event over the weekend at the book fair, and there was somebody there who. Uh, had recognized me and started talking to me. And I said, Hey, what do you think about this council size thing? She says, look, I, I live in North Charleston. Um, we, we feel forgotten. Um, and I, I, I would worry that if we had a fewer council members that we would feel even more forgotten. And, and so I, I think that there's a power in being able to have, you know, easy access to our um, our members of council, and I think that's a good thing. By the way, a texter because both of us apparently had brain lock there. We couldn't remember the name. It's Dancing Dog Cafe. Dancing Dog, thank it's, you. 
<laughs> so, yeah. I don't. Both of us had an opportunity, and I apologize to folks yeah. at Dancing Dog, uh, but Me we too. could not remember it. So, how much expense is this with City Council? I mean, what do you? I mean, let's face it. You guys ain't ain't going to go buy a new Benz or or uh, <laughs> uh, or, or retire on what you make at City Council. What what do City Council people get paid, and how much? Is, would expense factor into the number of council people we have? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, that, that's something that comes up. Uh, it, we we get uh, well, the, the total cost of council that's budgeted is about four hundred thousand, a little over four hundred thousand um, dollars. The last year that I think that we have numbers for, that were actual, that I have numbers anyway that were actual, um, was about three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So it's in that that ballpark. So you know, we're getting a pretty good deal, I think, to have twenty six people who you know it is part time, but mm-hmm. it's not. Uh, you know, we're not. Uh, it's certainly we're not getting paid all the time for all the work we're doing. No. The meeting last if night you're, about if you're this doing, issue. If you're doing your job right, no, you're, you're right. working far more than that. That's right. That's yeah, right. which yeah. I which I think I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No. The meeting last night. Go ahead. Yeah, the meeting last night was about the city council size. That wasn't a paid meeting. Yeah, we get paid two hundred fifty dollars per meeting uh, when we have our regular meetings, which are twice a month, and there's I think one extra one each mm-hmm. year. Okay, so I think the mayor, uh, and we've talked about it on the show, Mayor Goodwin has been on the show in the past, and she said that she's open to the idea of discussing downsizing council a little bit, but it, ultimately it's up to you guys, right? Is that the way it works? It, yeah, well, it's up to, to us, and then uh, it was interesting to learn, to learn last night, you know, any any change to the charter, which um, I think would be required for, for most of the, uh, any changes to the size of council, um, if if we we can change the charter on our own, but if one person uh, in the whole entire city of Charleston comes and says I don't like this, mm-hmm. then it has to it goes to a full vote. It goes to a full vote of the council of the uh, no sorry uh, of uh, the city of the city. So every be, voter gets to vote on it. It would have if, to be like a referendum or something or right, on a, like on a, on almost like a levy election type thing yep. where it would be like a, a special special thing there uh, on the ballot. I just think it's it's interesting, and I wonder. And you certainly weren't around when the charter was written, and I wasn't either. <laughs> but I'm wondering what was their concept back then uh, of having a council so large? And maybe it is like you said. The original idea was to. Pretty much everybody, and, and no matter where they live, you mentioned North Charleston, for example, you have access to your own council person, per se. Yeah. Not to say that the other, that you can't, you know, take concerns from somebody who's not in your district because you guys are council people and you get it all the time. I'm sure as you yep. mentioned being at a public event. Um, and, and I will say this as somebody who, um, I've known several people that have that have served on councils in various points, uh, uh, and not only in Charleston but other places. My I had a cousin who was the president of the school board in another county, um, and I can tell you, you're not just if you, if you're doing your job right, you're not just working on meeting night because I can tell you that my cousin I'm referring to his phone rang seven days a week with somebody complaining about something, which is what you're there for. You sign up for, but right. anybody that thinks well this is just if you're doing the job right. You're working, doing something council-related seven days a week, I would think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hear, hear from people all the time. Yeah. So uh, what do you hear when you talk to people? I mean, other you said that you've had people, somebody at the book fair, that said that they really liked it. What do you hear from other people out there? Yeah, I mean, first off, <laughs> this is not the issue that we're hearing from people about. <laughs> uh, this is not – people aren't on their own saying, oh, gosh, you know, every once in a while, it's again, it's those people who are kind of used to the access to power, I think. But most people are – this is not the top issue for them. Yeah. It's other things that you probably talk about on this show and, and that you could guess. Um but, you know, when I ask people about it, um, like I said, I, I you know, I've, I've been reaching out to people kind of interested in their thoughts. People are first, I think, are kind of surprised if they if they're not that used to a council this large. Um, but in terms of the people who live here and are used to it, um, I, I, again, I think that they they like being able to have access. The Dave Allen Show is brought to you by General Hardware and Lumber of Winfield. From kitchens to paints to decks, straight framing wood, roofing metal, and anything else you need, you'll find a General Hardware and Lumber of Winfield. I want to talk about the scooters for a moment. You were one of the ones that brought the scooters into Charleston. Quite a bit of skepticism bringing them in. Uh, not sure what police or others would say, but I can tell you I get texts of every kind every day to the show, many of which uh, I don't have time to read on the air or with the language don't want to read on the air uh but um i can tell you that as of yet i've not had a single complaint yeah. about any scooter issue in charleston uh, from your perspective you're the guy that kind of you know ushered the uh, ushered the scooters to charleston what's your what's your take on it? yeah i think it's been going fine you know i mean i um uh, I, i'm sure there's stuff that we can work out that work better i want to make sure i haven't spoken with any of the folks who have been involved in running them 
um, for a little bit, and we'll probably need to regroup over the winter. This is mostly going to be a seasonal thing. I think my guess is, you know, kind of after the holidays or something, it'll be kind of off the the streets for a little while because people aren't going to ride them in the in the cold as much. So, um, but but yeah, no, I I don't think that uh, you know I've I've been asking the uh, the mayor's office as well as uh, the police department haven't ha- had a lot of uh, issues. Most of them have been put in an appropriate place. That's the thing I was most worried about is people putting them in the wrong locations or blocking sidewalks and such. And generally speaking, people have been really good about that and putting them in the wrong, you know, they're, they're standing upright, et cetera. Mm-hmm. I'm sure sometimes they get knocked over, but uh, I think it's overall been a, a pretty good uh, success. Now you came on a couple of times and talked about it. Now do you address city council and other members of the media about it? Explain though, for people that are listening for the first time, how the scooters work in Charleston. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. So, I mean, uh, there's no docking stations. There's no place that they have to go back to um, other than there's a, someone whose job it is to drive around in a truck and pick them up and go charge them and then put them back out in appropriate locations. But um yeah, so you have an app, uh, the GPS on your app. You turn that on. You look to see where there's a scooter nearby. Um, you walk over to it. You scan a QR code. We all know how to use those now. Um, and then um, you have your, you would already have your your credit card and show that you you know show your ID that you're over eighteen. Um, and then uh, you know you unlock the scooter that's doing that. Uh, go on your way. Go wherever you want to go. Um, within you know mostly within the flats of Charleston. And then. Um, you know, scan it again or un, un, or lock it again, and then you're you're done. You walk wherever you want to go. So had there been – I know you'd be honest about it, Had there been any issues so far that you've heard? Not – I mean, not a lot. I mean, I think that there's – you know, I think <laughs> – I think in other places what's happened is, um, you, you know, people who like to steal things try to figure out if they can steal this and do something with it. And, um, you know, this is – they have this all over the country, and so there's people like that – everywhere mm-hmm. and so i think people are kind of experimenting with that here too there's been a couple but um but, it's the, not, but they probably weren't very successful in, no, in the I mean, stealing of these they things have, they have gps i mean they <laughs> people go well, out nobody to, ever said criminals were smart <laughs> Emmett. you know that's why they don't have legitimate jobs but. <laughs> so i mean I, I, there's just been a few i think but uh and, and i think that you're going to realize it's not really anything it's not going to be cost effective for them or make them a lot of money so it's just you know that'll probably fade away Mm-hmm. Let me ask uh, you're always good about taking questions. I have a couple texts here. You okay. yeah. uh, open to answer these text says removing some of, uh, of the at large positions would provide a louder voice for actual ward representatives. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that we need to have a, a, a mix there. The thing I worry about with having only ward and some some city councils have that. I, first, I mean, I've done a, 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 a lot of research on this. I've looked through all the different city councils. Uh, that are um, 25,000 uh, population or more in the in the whole country. Just kind of getting a sense of what, where people are. You know, there's a lot of them, and there are just all wards, and um, there are a lot of them. There are frankly a lot of them that are just all at large. Um, but I think having a blend is good because that way it's not just the kind of parochial uh, ward issues. Um, I see myself as a very small micro, um, you know, uh, mayor where I, I just have ideas about policies. I don't, I'm not in charge of anything, mm-hmm. but I have, you know, citywide ideas about things I can work with folks. And also, you know, I, I end up doing a lot of the local ward stuff too. I mean, people who know me who are in my neighborhood or they're in other parts of the city and they say, well, how do I deal with this uh, sign issue or whatever? Um, I, you know, I, I take a lot of those too. I try to communicate with the ward representative on it. Um, to make sure that they're in the loop. And so we're all uh, working on the same page. But um, those are things that I work on as well. In fact, one of your uh, co-workers uh, had a question about a stoplight. I'm still kind of working working through that. Okay. Uh, Tex says, uh, I've seen more of these scooters in ditches than people riding them. Has that been an issue? No. I mean, it, no. There's, there's, I mean, people are using them. They're, they that, they get parked a lot of different places. Um, and so maybe it seems like, oh, there's they're strewn about. But that's just how it works. Texas Kanawha City, East End, Downtown Area, South Hills, North End, and three at large. That's all we need. Downside City Council, and I forgot West Side, according to a, a texter. So there's one person that wants to <laughs> yeah. what's the downsize. Yeah, I guess they. Yeah, I, I mean, I would. I hope we don't forget the West Side. It's the largest population. Uh, Texas Dave, several weeks ago, I was driving downtown near the South Side Bridge. I was behind one of these new scooters. When we came to a red light, the person on the scooter kept going uh, right through it as if they didn't slow down at all. So it's obvious that what many said would happen with these has already started, not obeying the rules of the road. As much of a dangerous nuisance as bicycles are on the street, please put them back on the sidewalks. 
on the sidewalks. Well, I mean, so we, we heard during the during the debate that they didn't we didn't want them on the sidewalks, and they're not allowed on the sidewalks um, because of uh, you know I had one council member talking about head injuries, which I don't I haven't heard of any any head injuries actually at all with this. Um, but uh, so I, you know that we have to they should not be on the sidewalks. That's not safe for people who are who are walking. Um, and uh, people can get a ticket if they're if they don't follow the traffic laws. All right, final text, um, and it's this is for you. It says, if a large council uh, is a good idea, would you support at large delegates or senators to the state or federal government? At, um, so, would you like to see them under the dome? Basically, is what they're saying. Having at large, in addition to um, the, in, in, the in, districts, in, yeah. No, I mean I. I, I Sure. I mean, we, we kind of had that. We have a governor. We have uh, people who serve the entire state in different cabinet positions. Who should we elect them? We have we, have, we actually do elect uh, was a five or different, you know, the secretary of state, all these different people. These are at large members that have specific roles. Um, yeah. I mean, the question I have for the people who are uh, you know uh, interested in a smaller city council, why shouldn't we have a five member or nine member board that runs the state senate? Uh, or the uh, House of Delegates. What, what's the difference there? That why why is local government different? Where we we need to have uh, you know a, a small number of people. I mean, if the goal is efficiency, <laughs> that would be way more efficient. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've spent a fair amount of time in the state capitol, uh, you know, looking at how the the sausage is made there. That's that's complicated, <laughs> man. If we had we had a nine member board, we could just have lawyers write everything, and we would have to have to worry about it. Well, and there's a lot of people that have talked about not necessarily that, but about uh, th- that we have too many school boards, for example, and that maybe we should, you know, that there's no reason why some of these smaller counties should have their own school board. Maybe we need to consolidate that. So yeah. who knows? Who knows? <laughs> we can't solve it all here. Emmett, it's always uh, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks a lot, City yeah. Councilman Emmett Pepper. Appreciate you being here. It's 22 minutes away from Tampa. Dave Allen Show brought to you part by Meeks Realty Group. As a locally owned real estate powerhouse, they specialize in residential and commercial properties. No property too big or too small for Meeks Realty with their team of the finest realtors in the business. Meeks Realty Group is your trusted partner in finding your dream home or your dream commercial investment. Call them today, 304-401-1101 or visit meeks.us. Kim Mason from the Secretary of State's office coming up next from the Parmar Store Studio. It's the Dave Allen Show brought to you by the Thornhill Auto Group and the voice of Charleston WCHS. Brought to you by the Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses. Eric J. Tarr Family Businesses want to thank you for shopping locally. I received a call the other day from a woman. Her voice was shaking. She needed help. Her husband tragically was unable to call himself, but he had told her previously, if anything ever happens to me, call Morgan & Morgan. I was humbled and proud. And what higher honor could we receive than protecting someone's family after they're gone? Morgan & Morgan, for the people. Office 222 Capitol Street, Charleston. Cases will be handled by West Virginia licensed attorneys. The attorney in this ad is not licensed in West Virginia. Forthepeople.com. Having issues with your home like wet basements, water in your crawl space, bowing or leaning walls, or foundation cracks? You need Foster Construction, your foundation repair experts. Locally owned and operated, Foster Construction offers free inspections and estimates and has a licensed professional engineer on staff. Their services include basement and crawl space waterproofing, foundation repair, and retaining walls. Call 304-776-6263 and get started today online at fosterconstructionwv.com. Foster Construction, they'll fix it right the first time. Are you ready to make every adventure awesome? Look no further than the new Thornhill Toyota. Introducing the 2023 Toyota Camry, Corolla, and RAV4. The ultimate companions for your journey. Whether it's the sleek Camry or the adventurous RAV4, we've got the perfect drive for you. And don't forget our unbeatable selection. We've got a ride for every style and budget. At the new Thornhill Toyota, we're not just selling cars. We're creating unforgettable adventures. So why wait? Visit us today and let's make every adventure awesome together. Click or come by at ThornhillToyotaWV.com. We're on the Thornhill Motor Mile, US 119 Chapmanville. See Thornhill for full details. Hey, high school football fans, if you want to see where your team ranks every week, check out the Thornhill Auto Group Power Rankings at WVMetroNews.com. Every Sunday evening, we will update the football power ranking to find out where your favorite team ranks. Go to WVMetroNews.com, click on the High School Sports tab, and then High School Football Power Rankings. The 2023 Metro News Power Rankings presented by Thornhill Auto Group. A road to total savings starts with Thornhill. Visit them on the Thornhill Motor Mile. It 
is 19 minutes away from Tampa Dave Allen Show. It's brought to you in part by Hudson's Pizza. This month, your favorite Hudson's. Get a large 18-inch pepperoni pizza and any pizza dia for $21.99. Find your local Hudson's Pizza for dine-in delivery or pickup at Hudson'sPizza.com. And I have got a ton of text to get to today. Uh, text to Dave, we need to downsize the legislature and start making them pay their own way when in session. They're paid about $30,000 a year, according to a texter. Text says, uh, Dear Dave Allen, Morning Zoo. We have a new name, apparently. Uh, I love that you ask the hard-hitting questions such as, come on, man, tell me a funny guy tries to steal a scooter story. Just one story. Okay. Uh, Tex says, to make sure the scooter renters actually obey the laws of the roads, how about installing GoPro cameras on them, according to a texture. Texture says, only opinion you're getting from a council member on downsizing the person responsible for the scooters is a biased opinion. Well, if, you know, I'm an open open door policy here at the dave allen show so anybody that ever wants to come on the show they are more than welcome regardless of pro con i don't know if i had any cons on the show well eh, maybe i have i don't know but uh, anyway kim mason who's not a con uh from the western Union secretary of state's office joins us now kim good morning how are you good morning dave uh, i'm doing good i'm gonna need you to definitely go into that microphone a little bit there for me all right, all right. Good, uh, all right good there, you, there you go uh kim it was announced last week that the office of secretary of state was creating a statewide coalition of uh, business and others to fight against human trafficking here in the mountain state now we've all heard and we've seen stories about trafficking and many people think it only happens in other countries or sometimes people trying to get into america on the border states or whatever This is a problem, though, that's going on in every state in the union, including West Virginia. It absolutely is. It's it's underreported. And that's the problem. Um, A lot of victims are scared or don't even know that they're they are a victim of human trafficking. So it's just underreported. So people don't think that it's it's here, but it is. And it's very important to focus on and bring awareness to it so that we can help eradicate it. So why would the Secretary of State's office be involved in this? Well, that's a good question because that's not what we're known for. But um, it's an opportunity for us to educate businesses because, you know, we register the businesses in the state and that's 140 plus thousand businesses that we can get information to about how they can help human stop human trafficking. Um, we partnered with the Fusion Center on their You Can initiative to get them information on signs and how to report and and get law enforcement involved. And you mentioned the Fusion Center there. And full disclosure, Jack Lucart, one of the folks at the uh, Fusion Center, a very good uh, friend of mine, a frequent listener to the show, uh, too, by the way. We always appreciate that. So getting them in board in this and Homeland Security and all of this, it's it's kind of a, of a collaborative effort. And the business aspect of it, I understand that there's signage and so on and so forth. And some of it was already there, but there's even more going out. you got a host of businesses that have signed on to this across the state of West Virginia to put signs up in restrooms and things of that nature you know a, a, a number or whatever for people to contact to say hey there's human trafficking going on talk about how that works yeah so the the program is it, you know it was just uh, released a couple weeks ago so it's still new and businesses may not be aware of it we sent it out via email um, and we did certainly get some kickbacks on email so hopefully they're listening to your show and and they you know reach out to our office and we can get them signed up through our website to to help get these packets out but each packet includes a brochure and a flyer from the Fusion Center. And we also ha- showcase how we're involved. We have a little sticker that we can put in the bathrooms for victims to call if they're away from their perpetrators so that they can get help. Um, and then we also have a list, uh, a resource page so that they can uh, reach out to shelters or things that they may be in need of. Dr. Kim Mason again from the West Virginia Secretary of State's Office. And again, it does make sense to use the Secretary of State's Office because you are the uh, keeper of all of the records when it comes to businesses across the state of West Virginia. And there's no there's no other entity that every business in the state has to be, you know, some will have some dealings at some time limited or on large scale with the with the secretary of state's office. So it's certainly it's kind of a no brainer uh, that you would be the ones to get that information out. Yeah, absolutely. We we can be the conduit to get them the training and the materials that they need to really be aware of this issue and, and help victims.
Well, switch gears here just for a moment, Kim, and you don't hear a lot about voter fraud in West Virginia these days, thankfully. I mean, we've come a long way. As somebody from southern West Virginia, I can say that. Uh, we've come a long way, but it, deals, it does still happen uh, infrequently. And we just had a case and a conviction of voter fraud uh, in West Virginia. Tell us the story. Tell us what happened. We did. And like you said, it it may not be prevalent, but it doesn't take rampant fraud to to change an election. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of small municipal elections that can be decided by one or two votes. So it's important to look at every election law violation that are out there. And this one in particular um, was the first uh, case that went to trial. Um, and that we we've had several convictions, but most of them are, are pleas. And this one went to trial through a jury. And so we got to experience the whole process um, under Secretary Warner's term. And this came about everything just aligned perfectly uh, for this to be reported. And everything was done right. Uh, the clerk's office notified us. And what area was this? This was in Fayette County. Fayette County. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, this was yeah. in Fayette mm-hmm. County. Mm hmm. Um, the clerk's office notified us when an individual had registered to vote that was still serving a felony conviction on parole, which they're not allowed to do. Um, but he had actually attempted to vote as well um, when he was not in the poll book because he had been removed and um, and he was notified that he couldn't vote for that reason. But then he still attempted to register to vote. Um, and we indicted him and once well, we didn't indict him but our investigator did the investigation and we brought the information to the prosecutor's office and they took it to the grand jury who indicted him mm-hmm. and then we set our trial and got a conviction okay and uh, so what was the sentence of the trial so the sentence um he was convicted on unlawful registration he was not um convicted on the uh charge of illegal voting but the judge sentenced him to the maximum penalty it was a year in jail and a thousand dollar fine and so you talked about that this was a situation where all of these systems clicked together, yes. you know, because the clerk's office in Fayette County, I'm, I'm presuming, caught it. And then it was this was not like it was a mistake. I mean, the guy knew what he did and then he still tried to do it. Yes. And so the safeguards that were put in place by the clerk's office, starting with them through the secretary of state's office, were able to catch the guy and lock him away. Yes, they they worked. They this gentleman went to you know prison on his felony conviction, um, and then he was removed from the voter rolls because he was a convicted felon and not eligible to vote at that time. He still attempted to vote. the The clerk's office uh, notified us. He then went and attempted to register to vote, and the clerk's office notified us. Um, And I should mention that his ballot was challenged and the Board of Canvassers chose not to to count it because he wasn't eligible. So everything worked out the way that it should have. So if we're coming up on an election year and fraud uh, in the in the in the world of election fraud can happen at any point, as you said, municipal elections, not didn't have to be the every four year presidential thing. I mean, it happens uh, all the time. So what what do you folks do uh, with the secretary of state's office in conjunction with the county clerks? Because that's they're 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 the first line, you know, is the county clerks, as as you all well know. So what what kind of safeguards are in place? What do you do? I know you have training, things of that nature. But if somebody thinks that somebody is doing something wrong what what's the whole process how did this whole thing work so we certainly have a complaint process they can reach us through the website through phone through text um through um various forms uh, just to report any suspicious activity that they may see related to the election the, the elections but um, we train our investigators, and, and they are out all day long on Election Day. They go and visit polling places and precincts, and they are very familiar with the, the county clerks and, and their communities that they are in. So people know to bring it to their attention if they see any activity that, that should be stopped and prevented, first of all, um, you know, or then later looked at and possibly get charged. And the bottom line is, is that you're going to get caught. I mean, if you try to do this, I mean, there's just too many safeguards in place, uh, specifically in West Virginia, through the primarily the county clerks in conjunction with the secretary of state's office. You, you, if you attempt this, you're going to get caught. Absolutely. There's no there's no question there. We are building relationships constantly with the, the local prosecutors um, to take our cases. And it, there's no there's no hiding election fraud anymore we are proactive and out in the field and catching it before it even occurs and then if it does yeah we're talking to prosecutors and and 
we're getting they're getting charged let's go back to the human trafficking thing before we let you go uh where can people learn more about that uh the uh, the, the program that you have for businesses to try to combat human trafficking certainly go to our website please or just call our office we have a, a person that's uh that's manning this um the sign up so that you can get a response and you can get a packet mailed out to you as quickly as possible we want to engage every business out there well, Kim, I, I was always a pleasure to see you and a pleasure to have you uh, on the show today. And I know as we head into 2024, again, for the Secretary of State's office, there's never really any downtime uh, because there's always something going on. But 2024 is the big election year with presidential and governor and, and all these other ones. So you folks will be busy. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to be here with us today. Thanks a lot, Kim Mason from the West Virginia Secretary of State's office. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Dave. Hang out with me one second here. The uh, Dave Allen Show is brought to you part by Bridge Valley. Are you interested in improving your company's IT workforce? Well, did you know the Bridge Valley offers custom-tailored IT training to bridge the skills gap with Bridge Valley? You can train for little or no cost with a 50-50 salary match. Bridge Valley can also supply skilled graduates and apprenticeships for your company. Visit bridgevalley.edu slash apprenticeships for more information. And the president of Bridge Valley, Dr. Casey Sachs, is going to be my guest host tomorrow on Friday Funhouse. So we're going to learn more about Bridge Valley tomorrow. So we're going to have a little fun with Dr. Sachs on the show tomorrow as well. We're back after this from the Parmar Store studio it's a dave allen show brought to you by the thornhill Ladder group on the voice of charleston wchs brought to you by the eric j tar family businesses eric j tar family businesses live to make life better for you and your family if it's not cost effective for your business to maintain an in-house it staff then let comex business systems be your complete it consulting service solution by outsourcing it services you free up yourself and your staff for revenue generating opportunities comex can provide an it help desk with 24 7 support server and pc management and monitoring it strategy backup servers and a client portal to help keep track of everything Call COMAX Business Systems for a free quote today. COMAX Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. Are you ready to make every adventure awesome? Look no further than the new Thornhill Toyota. Introducing the 2023 Toyota Camry, Corolla, and RAV4. The ultimate companions for your journey. Whether it's the sleek Camry or the adventurous RAV4, we've got the perfect ride for you. And don't forget our unbeatable selection. We've got a ride for every style and budget. At the new Thornhill Toyota, we're not just selling cars. We're creating unforgettable adventures. So why wait? Visit us today and let's make every adventure awesome together. Click or come by at ThornhillToyotaWV.com. We're on the Thornhill Motor Mile, US 119 Chapmanville. See Thornhill for details. Hello, I am Judge Stephanie Abraham, and I am running for circuit court here in Kanawha County. Judge Stephanie Abraham was appointed to the circuit court by Governor Jim Justice. Judge Stephanie Abraham owned and managed her own law firm and was an attorney for the Department of Education and General Counsel for the State Board of Education. Judge Stephanie Abraham is a fair and balanced but tough judge who will always follow the Constitution to protect liberty and achieve justice for all. I am Judge Stephanie Abraham. I appreciate your vote for Kanawha County Circuit Court. Paid for by the Committee to Elect Judge Stephanie Abraham. You will want to get up early for this. The Log Home Show, October 27th through the 29th at the Charleston Convention Center. Bring your plans, ideas, and thoughts for your dream home. Explore rustic decor, pergolas, sunrooms, pavilions, millworks, and so much more. Enter to win fabulous door prizes such as a three-night stay at Hemlock Haven Cabins. It all happens at the Charleston Convention Center, October 27th through the 29th. Admission at the door. For more information, visit internationalloghomeshows.com. It's five away from 10. Dave Allen Show brought to you part by your local insurance experts from Brightway, the Maze Agency of Taze Valley. From your home to your car or even to your pet, Brightway, the Maze Agency will customize the perfect insurance plan for you at Brightway, the Maze Agency. They're not just agents, they're your friends and neighbors. Good local folks to deal with. John and Sherry Maze, call them today, 304-814-2509 or visit brightwaymaze.com. Text says, maybe we should have members of our Secretary of State's office go to Georgia and Arizona to teach them how to be aware of fraud. <laughs> says the texter. You know, and I will say, this for my time in the Secretary of State's office. Um, and I don't want to do too much inside baseball here, but I was one of those folks that Kim referred to as going out and, and monitoring elections and you know things of that nature. There were far more problems then, and I haven't been with the office in a couple of years, three years uh, to be exact. There were far more problems on the local, local municipal elections than there ever were when it came to larger. I mean, people would fight like cats and dogs to be the mayor 
or on city council of some very, very small town in West Virginia. And I'm not trying to diminish it by saying it's not important because obviously all elected officials and public servants are important. But, you know, we, we didn't spend a whole lot of time dealing with issues in Charleston, Huntington, Morgantown. It was always in the smaller towns, the very, very, very small towns is where all the problems seem to take place for some reason. Uh, serious biz now. A uh, big story this morning, actually, of course, is the shooting in Maine. Now, as of now, the shooter is still on the loose. As of the time I started the show uh, this morning, ABC News will have more. Hoppy will cover it as well, coming up at 10.06. And for the first time since, I think, the Roosevelt administration, we have a House Speaker uh, in D.C. Mike Johnson is his name. He's from Louisiana. Uh, both Congress people from West Virginia, Carol Miller and Alex Mooney, voted for him. So we move on, at least for now. One Republican senator said she had no idea who he was and would have to Google him. And she was a Republican that said that, which is something you always want to hear from your elected officials. Uh, <laughs> Um, according to one writer, uh, they talk about uh, Mr. Johnson uh, as he. This is a quote. He combines hardline views with a general, per, uh, with a gentle personal style. Um, he is far right. Make no mistake about it. Some have said he's the most conservative speaker in the history of the House. He, of course, opposes abortion and same-sex marriage, and has been a hardcore Trump supporter and an election denier. So, as the New York Times pointed out this morning. Um, a good question is, why would more mainstream Republicans, the more mainstream folks, vote for this guy? Well, because basically they felt they had no choice. As one moderate congressman said, there are places where we differ, but we have to get back to governing for the country. So, amen. And good luck with that. The Dave Allen Show presented in part by Pinnacle Consultants. Whether you're replacing a roof, remodeling the kitchen, or replacing a bathroom to keep it, safe, uh, keep it safe and keep it legal, get with Pinnacle. They can inspect your site, collect samples, perform lab analysis, and provide results within a week. Testing all renovations for mold, asbestos, and lead is the law in West Virginia. Visit PinnacleCorp.net for Pinnacle Consultants because what you don't know can't hurt you. I'll close with this. So apparently, I created quite a stir on the interwebs yesterday with the picture that I posted of State Democratic Party Chair and Delegate Mike Pushkin along with Senate Finance Chair Eric Tarr. The two were on the show in separate segments yesterday. And I was able to get them to pose together in the hallway yesterday during a commercial break as Tarr was leaving and Pushkin was coming in. Now, the picture, if you want to see it, if you think I'm lying that I got the two of them to post together, it's posted on Dave Allen Radio and Facebook and the Dave Allen Show on X, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Now, I'm not saying the two are hanging out and having lunch together, okay? But it was a nice moment to prove that two people who are polar opposites on everything can at least be cordial. And, of course, there were those, and I heard from them, saying, how could he, and you can fill in, Ryan, your favorite he here, pose with him and fill in your favorite him? And to those people, I would say, get over it. Neither one of them is evil. I'm good friends with both of them. They just have differing political opinions. So just get over it. Get over it. All right, my thanks to Kim Mason from the Secretary of State's Office for being here today, Councilman uh, uh, Emmett Pepper, and also G Money from the Beat. We will see you at Gomart Ballpark tonight for the now sold out Trick or Beat, powered by Todd Judy Motors, 6 and 7 30, the start time tonight. Tomorrow, coming up on the show, Chris Lawrence will talk a little high school football, more on Guys Night Out this weekend. And my guest host tomorrow, Dr. Casey Sachs of Bridge Valley. We'll see you then. Until then, have fun and love somebody. W243DRFM Charleston and W283AQ Cross Lanes, a WVRC media station. We're proud to live here too. That I posted of State Democratic Party Chair and Delegate Mike Pushkin along with Senate Finance Chair Eric Tarr. The two were on the show in separate segments yesterday. And I was able to get them to pose together in the hallway yesterday during a commercial break. As Tar was leaving and Pushkin was coming in. Now, the picture, if you want to see it, if you think I'm lying that I got the two of them to post together, it's posted on Dave Allen Radio and Facebook and the Dave Allen Show on X, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Now, I'm not saying the two are hanging out and having lunch together, okay? But it was a nice moment to prove that two people who are polar opposites on everything 
can at least be cordial. And, of course, there were those, and I heard from them, saying, how could he, and you can fill in, Ryan, your favorite he here, pose with him and fill in your favorite him. And to those people, I would say, get over it. Neither one of them is evil. I'm good friends with both of them. They just have differing political opinions. So just get over it. Get over it. All right, my thanks to Kim Mason from the Secretary of State's Office for being here today, Councilman uh, uh, Emmett Pepper, and also G Money from The Beat. We will see you at Go Mart Ballpark tonight for the now sold-out Trick or Beat, powered by Todd Judy Motors, 6 and 7.30, the start time tonight. Tomorrow coming up on the show, Chris Lawrence will talk a little high school football, more on Guys Night Out this weekend, and my guest host tomorrow, Dr. Casey Sachs of Bridge Valley. We'll see you then. Until then, have fun and love somebody. CHSAM, W243DRFM Charleston, and W2838Q Cross Lanes, a WVRC media station. We're proud to live here too.